For Filipino and other products from Asia as well as fresh fruits and vegetables, poultry, meats, and seafood, come and visit 88 Supermarket with branches at 4801 Victoria Drive and its new location at 2611 East 49th Avenue in Vancouver. Philippine News Canada is brought to you by Rayford Media Group. Kabayan, narito na ang pinalawak at pinalakas na coverage ng Philippine News Canada, Palitang Vancouver Nationwide. Mga pangunahing balitang nakalap ng aming news team para sa lunggong ito. Mula sa silid balitaan ng Philippine News Canada, kasama ang aming mga field reporters and news correspondents, ako po si Rosette Korea. At ito ang Philippine News Canada, Palitang Vancouver. Ang apelidong Daza ay kilalang kilala all over the world, especially in the world of Philippine cuisine. Nakapanayang kamakailan lang ng Juan on Juan dito sa PNC Balitang Vancouver, ang Daza family with Sandy, Stella, and Mariles on the Zoom call. Kaya panoorin natin ang magkakapatid as they talk about their food, their family, and their friendship with the Marcuses. I live in Manila. I live in Manila. My work is in Manila. Okay. Do you do you come back to Vancouver once in a while? Ah, uh, not that often anymore. Because I I got traumatized when I lived there. Oh. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know I I stayed in Vancouver. I loved it. Pero after mga three years, I got tega mo na hirap pa lang ng boy dito. <laughs> Ayun. But no, I, I love Vancouver. I love and I, I have a lot of friends there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we moved here in the early 2000s, we still saw um, your restaurant along Main Street. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That was one of my traumas in uh, Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> I am, you know, I, I think my food was okay, mm -hmm. but uh, I wasn't doing very well. Weekends I was okay, weekdays I was dead. So that's why I decided to come home after that. I closed the restaurant. Pali nagchichismisa naman tayo pag weekend, na weekday. Hindi masaya pag tayo magkasama rin, okay naman. Tell us a little bit more about um, that the culinary journey of yours. How did it start? Was it inspired by mom? Um, you know, there was no, I don't know it, if it was inspired by my mom. I think it was more of exposure. See, mm -hmm. we were always in the restaurant business. As a waiter, kasi to me, um, every time, siguro mga 98% of our clients were French, fine dining French. It was a fine dining Filipino restaurant. And the way we served food was appetizers were uh, lumpia, pancit, sinigang na sugpo. Kohol or your escargot, but binago ng sauce. And then the wow. main course, yeah. So the main courses were lechon kawali, uh, chicken pork adobo, caldereta lamb. We had sugpo with tabanan talangka sauce, which the French flipped over because they didn't know what it was. Ang sarap sarap nong, di ba? To them, it's six otik. Eh. And then the main, the desserts were San Sibal, uh, ube, I don't know, ube cake, ube pie, or ube, ube pie, pie, chocolate ube pie. pie. Uh, and then we had the uh, Brasso de Mercedes. We had sometimes you'd have fresh mango when the, French, when the French let go of our the, the seeds of our mango. Putin putin na yung buto dahil sinisip sip nila. Now, uh, instead of uh, after uh, an after drink, instead of cognac, we would serve them lambanog with you know, yung uh, flavored with the uh, langka and uh, sometimes raisins. So to them, that was an exotic experience. Now. Me as a waiter, every time I saw them enjoying our food, that started my passion for wanting to. Because you became very proud. Eh. Pinoy ka, nakikita mo, enjoy na enjoy mga Frances. Parang wow, kakatuwa ito. So that's where that's where actually I think 
my desire to promote Filipino cuisine to the world started. Do you know in the store? So, may mga puti, I, I remember when they were making the community center, yung mga construction workers, di mga, iba-iba, may mga puti. And I guess they got used to eating our food. Sarap na sarap sila. One time, this guy goes, don't tell me what it is, just give it to me. So, binigay ko sa kanya, bopis. Wow. The next day, yeah, the next day, sabi niya, that was so good. Sabi niya, what was it? So, sinabi ko, pork lungs, pork liver, pork. But, sabi niya, sabi niya it, I wouldn't have ordered it if I knew what it was. Sabi niya, but it was very good. Mm-hmm. Tapos, alam mo pang isang gusto nila is dinakdakan. Hindi Kaya nila alam ko ano. Kaya ng adventure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mga tuwa, kasi, wow, what's this? Ganon. Tapos kung malaman nila na parang nye, mga <laughs> Well, siguro, siguro kung ano sila, if they're Irish or Scottish, they're They can have both pieces. Yes. Diba? yes. Oh, Kasi okay. they have that. I mean, even the Spanish yeah. have, you know, the blood Correct. sausage also. So, yeah. pwede. Pwede. Pwede natin ibenta yung dinuguan tsaka bopi sa kanila. <laughs> I just wanted to pick your brain <laughs> on on Filipino cuisine. It's something that I'm really very excited about as well. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's why I wanted to ask you a, a few of those questions. And, you know, like I said, you're your your last name is synonymous to philippine cuisine and so it's we can't separate those two things okay, your your mom was, yeah, my mom's. <laughs> yeah your mom was the quintessential queen <laughs> of philippine okay. cuisine and of course of spanish cuisine as well and right. you know cooking it up with nora was something right. that i watched every saturday oh, really? <laughs> whenever it was on the theme song then you must remember the theme song tan taran taran <laughs> It, yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell us, uh, I, I know that you and President Bong Bong are good friends. And, you know, can you give us a little bit of a background of how that happened? And, you know, when did it happen? Don't You don't have to give dates. You don't want to yeah. expose no, I, your I, I age. Or... <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, that started in 1973. Bong and I came home from Paris. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a girlfriend then. I, you know, I was kind of busy. Bong naman. You know, Bong dress as well is kind of good looking. So one day, a friend of mine, I don't remember if it was, they were cousins, Danny Rodriguez was the son of the governor of Rizal, si Isidro Rodriguez, and his cousin Vincent, wanted to date Bong with Aimee. So, oh. yeah, that was that's the way they, they met. Eh. So what Bong did was he said, okay, you know, we had one of the top French restaurants in Manila before called Obombi Van. Mm-hmm. So Bong said, let's, I'll invite you guys, let's have lunch in, you know, in... Uh, A bomb event. So when they met, Aimee brought her two siblings, Irene and Bong Bong. Si Bonget. Bonget ang tawag namin dyan eh. So that's where they met Bong first. My brother, walang pakailam yan eh. So, you know, parang, uh, but he was very, put it this way, he was very confident. And that's where they hit it off very well with, with Bong Bong. So soon after that, uh, they had a party in the yacht and Bong invited my brother. And, you know, they clicked. They really clicked. I, mean, I had not met Bong Bongs at that time. And ever since then, they were together every day. Si Bong, bata yan eh. He was maybe 15 or 16 at the time. My brother's six years older. So what they would hang out every day until everybody had to go back to Europe. Bong was studying, Bong Bong was studying in London. Uh, my brother and I were working in Paris. So we went there. We went back to the restaurant. And then Bong Marcos invited Bong and I, or well, Bong, and Bong brought me to London. So the first time I saw Bong Marcos, I was like, but you see them on TV and the newspaper. And then I met Irene also. It was very, very nice. And then we became friends. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the real friendship was between my brother Bong and Bong Yan, Bong Bong. So eventually, how did this friendship become a stronger bond throughout the years and even until now? Um, well, you know, you, you and Bong Bong are, you know, are close as, you know, until now. Well, you know, every time we'd go back to Manila, when we all graduated, we'd always hang out together. We'd sleep in our house. Uh, I would sleep in, or Bong would also sleep in his house. He had the house in, in uh, Seaside, Zaparanaque. And then Mariles, my sister, became very close to Irene. Irene, is, Irene and I are also very close. I, Mariles is like the sister of Irene, older sister of Irene. And because of Marilisa's closest, sir, I became very close to Irene also. So, yun. Uh, and then we haven't lost touch, you know, up and down when they were removed removed from from kidnapped. You know, they should listen to the other side of the story of 
how they re- they were removed because you know like I tell people I was just arguing with my fraternity brothers the activists from UP to them they have a perception of the Marxists I know them personally I know their character I know their you know so th- that's a dip- different perspective so yun. Absolutely. I think that um, history can can be well told if we see the uh, if we see both sides of the story or oh, all of both sides of the story, right? Definitely, yeah. So, so this particular friendship with the Marcuses you've um, you've nurtured over the years, and um, even during the passing of your brother Bong, they they yeah. were there and uh, they were there to support you. What was yes. that like? Well, uh, you know. Si Bong kasi and uh, my brother, parang they hadn't spoke, they hadn't really seen each other a lot, no? Uh, the last two years. And then one day, Bong got sick and he stopped eating. So I called my sister-in-law, who's very, very close to us, si Gloria, the wife of Bong, ex-wife. And she, we, and I don't know, Mariles, tama ba? Si Bell was the one who picked up Bong from, Bong would Bell, ano, Bell come took to the hospital. Yeah. Took him yeah. to the hospital. Yeah. So, every day, I had a restaurant in Rockwell called Wooden Spoon. And right beside that, there was a wine bar. Bong would just sit there and have wine every day, it's starting in the morning. So one day, Bong stopped eating. So I called Gloria and I said, Gloria, see, Bong has stopped eating. So what Bell did was, she, and Bell and Bong were not really talking that much also. Because si Bong, the problem with Bong naman is... He would always call Bell, and Bell naman kasi, she would always call Bong na, you know, don't drink, da, da, da. So to Bong naman parang, hey, my gosh, you know, I'm the dad, where you doing? Anyway, long story short, she took Bong to the hospital, and then uh, Bong was okay. Uh, I saw him on a Saturday, and then he told me he was going to leave on Tuesday. Monday early morning, he just had a heart attack and had slipped into a coma. That's when B- Bong Marcos would visit him every single day for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yun. And Marilas, Silas Tello were all there. So, yun. What, what year was this? Six years ago? Six, six, just six years ago. Uh, maybe July 14. July 14. Huh? July 14. July 14. July 14. July 14. But still, still days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He died just but still day. But this happened like mga two weeks before. Oh, Okay. Um, now, now there's a there's a TikTok video of um, President um, Bong Bong um, about his best friend. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, he I, he was very likely talking about uh, Bong, my brother. Actually, yan uh, dalawang best friend yan eh. uh, But the, in that TikTok, very likely si Bong pinag niya. Now, there is some best friend yan before classmate niya from uh, grade school si Jun Camilon. But Jun Camilon. In September 14, 1978, we had gone to the party of Bong Marcos in Ilocos. Flying back, uh, our plane, the plane that we were supposed to go the ride crashed. Namatay mga friends namin. That's where his best Camilon passed away also. Ang nangyari niyan, we were, there were two planes. We were having lunch in Curimao. Uh, we were a group of 15, 16, I don't really remember exactly. There were two planes, and the instruction of President Marcos at the time was for Bong Bong to ride the other plane where Imi was. But we were late. We arrived in the airport. We saw the plane of Imi taking off na. So, sabi ni Bong, BBM, sa isang plane. Anyway, it's going to the same place. So, we were all seated already. At that time, we were planning a party for Irene. Irene's birthday kasi niya, 16 eh, Saturday yun. Kami, Bong was for 13, 13 ang birthday niyan. Anyway, so sa, we were planning a party for Irene. Amy was planning a party for Irene. So we were going to just merge it. Now, when we sat on the plane, sabi ni Bong, dito rin naman pupunta yung, doon rin naman pupunta yung plane. Halika na, dito tayo. So we were all seated already. Nag-graduate yung security ni Bong, si Alex Rizky, Captain Alex A. Marcos. And Marcos said, no, send the other plane back, which is very unusual because normally the kids are, they fly separate eh. Marcos and Imelda would always fly separate just in case something happened. Anyway, the other plane was sent back. Sabi ko kay BBM at the time, nako, huwag na natin kausapin si Imi, magagalit yan. So anyway, the other plane landed. Five of us, it was Alex Resnita, Security Pong, Bong Marcos, Philip Tung Hing, myself, and Bambi Rivilla. We were all on the way back from our seats. We were on back to the other plane. And then the security of Imi, who was uh, Oscar Valenzuela, Venezuela stopped me and said, boss, puno na yung plane. 
okay, so, so I went back with Bambi and on the way back, I turned around, there were two photographers who Alex Resnit asked to go, parang transfer din sa kapila. So sabi ko, Bam, sige. So I went back and then I, going up the stairs of the plane, I didn't look at Valenzuela already. I went to Resnit. I said, Alex, meron pa? Saan niya, boss? Meron dalawa. So we sat. When we got to, so we boarded the plane, we took off. Beautiful uh, weather in Ilocos. Perfect. When we got to Manila, mga 3 o'clock in the afternoon dito, Bah, biglang ang lakas ng ulan. So what we did was instead of landing, when I looked out of the window, ang layo namin from the uh, airstrip. So we went up, the plane went up, we went around Laguna de Bay. I remember, so mga 20 minutes and I was t- thinking to myself, ako, sabotage ito kasi bongbong just turned 21, I remember. So anyway, uh, after that, we landed and then we all had uh, merienda in a restaurant in Makati, so Wombivant at that time. From there, we went to my friend's house in Bambi. We were watching TV pa eh. And then uh, the door knocked and somebody said, uh, Master, si you know, Ambassador Romualdez. So Bong BBM went to the phone and said, he was talking and we were watching TV and he just said, what? When we looked up, he said, pari, bumagsak yung plane. So yun. Uh, and I remember Bong had to go to his best friend's house in Cubao and, to- and tell the parents that June died. So yun, yun ang, that, that's where all of us became very close also after that. For Filipino and other products from Asia, as well as fresh fruits and vegetables, poultry, meats, and seafood, come and visit 88 Supermarket with branches at 4801 Victoria Drive and its new location at 2611 East 49th Avenue in Vancouver. For your palm and face reading, horoscope, numerology, and basta shasta, See astrologer Raj Guru, located at 48th Avenue East, Fraser Street, Vancouver, or call 604-750-0126. Stella and Mariles, we t- tell us a little bit about yung, yung friendship ninyo with Irene. Because, you know, si, si Irene, she's, she seems to be the quietest among Quiet. all the Marcos mm-hmm. children, hindi ba? She's very private. And um, yes, even, yes. Her, even her personal life, you know, being married to an Araneta, Talagang hindi hindi mo siya makikita sa limelight. So what what is Irene really like in person? She's always been very nice and sweet. I met her like Sandy when they were in London. That we I was living in Paris, working at the American Embassy in Paris then and Ocil. Um, so we go to London, and that's how I met her, and uh, we got along really well. Then she went back to the Philippines to go to UP. So. Uh, and I went back to Manila then. So she would hang out with each, see each other every day. She'd be at the Bon Makati. We'd even like go buy fish, fish balls. balls. Like, right? It's a gym. UP gym. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yung kasama ng mga security, nakaka-10 pesos kami. If I can say so. Oy, mahal na yun, ha? 10 yeah, pesos. I saw on the fish balls. <laughs> fish balls, yeah. And then, wala. She's simple lang. She, we'd play badminton or, or stuff. And she's very always check, checking on her dad to make sure it was okay or whatever. Um, and then that, I was there, part of the romantic reggae. Yeah, yeah siya yung ano. <laughs> have, you spoken, have you spoken to her recently? Um, yeah, I spoke to, yeah, just during the inauguration. Yeah. So we, we're in touch uh, when they're in the States or we're in San Francisco. We, we talk and see each other. Now, how does she feel about, you know, her, her older brother, si Kuya, being, uh, or Manong, uh, being at the helm now? How does she feel about the whole thing? And does, does, does she and her family still live in the, in, the, in the Philippines? Is that where they're staying or they, are they in the U.S.? No, they live in the Philippines. Oh, okay. um, but they, she totally supports him. And like she was telling me, oh, I helped set up the music, the Cecilica and the Philharmonic. During the inauguration you know, dinner, she was the one who helped set up the stuff. So she's very much involved, maybe behind the scenes, lang. Yeah. Well, and 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 I know um her is her background in the arts. I, yes. I know that her background is in the arts, and so you know with with um with Madame Imelda and the folk arts theater and the yeah, you get, but that's Center what everybody was saying for sure. There's going to be uh, more arts mm-hmm. involved, like like Mrs. Madame, Mrs. Imelda, she's a super nice lady, even up to now, and very low-key. I'm and actually really into music and stuff. Huh? 
Well, I'm actually a big fan of her ternos, and you know she nobody nobody wears a terno like <laughs> Madame Zelda. <Yes. Delta. laughs> That's for sure, <laughs> hands down. <laughs> and and so 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 the the vibe of the whole family is is really excitement and, and really really hopeful. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. Of course, we are not only the family, but all the friends. We've known them. We've known them for so long. We know who they are. And I know that we're all rooting for them that they will all they will, he will succeed and for the country and for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And so when when you and um, when you Stella and Mariles uh, come come back to to Vancouver, we're going to continue with it's our based, restaurant. In San I live in San Francisco. I'm not in Vancouver. Oh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. And uh, it's only Stella who lives in Vancouver. Yes, and we're Rich also here now in Singapore. Oh, oh, but you're in Singapore right now. No, oh, okay. Yet. So when you when you come back to Vancouver, is that uh is that something that you will continue to like? Oh Richmond? yes, for sure. Yeah. Really. yeah. Yes. Well, that's that's very exciting. Maybe once you're back, we can we can have a chat. And um, sure. this is one of those things that I I I really like to do. Really feature more um Filipino restaurants and Filipino cuisine, and and really put it out there um in the mainstream. Um, now that you know, I know it's not on the list of questions, but yeah. just uh, just just um, just curious. Now that um, and you know, you mentioned earlier that you know the Marcus is very well. They're they've been good friends. They've put, you you've been good family friends ever since. Um, with uh, with the Marcus is back and with President Bong Bong at the helm. Um, what are your hopes for him and and for the country? Well, hundred percent. I know he'll be honest. And I, I, I will vouch for his character. I know the people have a, an image of them, uh, even the president. I know him personally. I know what character he has. I'll give you an instance. You know, in 1980s, no, in uh, 1983, we have a project in Ilocos Norte that was never published called Northern Foods. It was a tomato paste plant in Ilocos Norte. We were producing tomato paste, and I was the president at that time. When I got the check of 100, I don't remember, 120 or 140 million, I presented the check to Bong. BBM, he was governor at the time. I said, what do you want from this? Then I was thinking, you know, at that time, in practice with many, you know, I, I, this is speculation na parang you'll get the kickback and then bahala ni project. You know, two things Bong told me. Sanya, pari, two things I'll ask for you. Number one, you take care of the farmers of Ilocos Norte. I told this to PCGG when they had left already. You take care of the farmers of Ilocos Norte. Malaki utang na loob namin dyan. Number two, pare, you know, you run the company straight. Wala katukuhan. And yun. So we did exactly that. When they were kidnapped in 1986, you know, PCGG came to us. Even Mariles, pinahirapan ng PCGG. Yeah. They came. And that's exactly what I told them. Now, that project was a very, very good project. In fact, President Marcos would put a tariff on the importation of tomato paste from China kasi mas mure to protect the local farmers. And, you know, we were producing 55-gallon bags of uh, tomato paste put them in drums. And even before they were produced, they were sold already to uh, the mga fast food chains and the sardine manufacturers. No one ever talked about the success of that project. In fact, that was the first project that Ambassador Bosworth inaugurated. We didn't want any publicity, eh? pero dinala ni President Marcos si Bosworth that just to prove to the people because at that time, it chismis na, you know, maraming, uh, maraming NPA, blah, blah, just to prove to them na walang NPA dito. I think, you know, yung start ng propaganda na, you know, tatanggalin ni si Marcos. That, that's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's very important for us to also know that side of the story. And and so sa, sa palagay mo ba yung magiging um magiging presidency ni President Bongbong Marcos would be uh, truly a legacy of also his father's work, or will he be paving his own way? I I think you know a lot of people say kasi na parang you know he should redeem his father. You know, Bong will do what he thinks is best for the country. He has a passion for the Filipino people, believe it or not, you know. Hindi, it's not, if you notice from him, he's a very humble person. He doesn't like to call attention to himself. There's a time, uh, the whole Ilocos Norte was covered with medical issues, but he doesn't tell people, look what I've done. He's not that type, eh? You know, so even the tomato paste, he doesn't tell people. Very few people know that the tomato paste existed. It is one of the most beautiful and successful projects 
of the Marcoses. But anyway, he's not that type of a person. If you will notice from his demeanor, hindi siya yung ang galing ko, ito ginawa ko, wala siyang publicity. Basta gagawin niya lang kung anong tama. You know, there's one, recently lang, before the, during the election, be, during the elections, we were seated beside each other. And he was telling me, pare, alam mo, ang talagang concern ko, yung dami ng taong nagugutom. Nagugutom talaga, pare. And you could see his, yung talagang, he really wanted to help. You know, he really wanted to help. Those are things that people don't see. Eh. The, and these are things that I can tell people, I know him personally. I know his heart. I know his desire. I know he's 100% honest and I will vouch for him. Whatever well, that you Well, thank you so much, Sandy. It's, it's, it's been wonderful chatting with you, you know, um, about your friendship with the Marcuses and, of course, about your mom and, and, and the culinary world. It's, it's, it's just wonderful to see you again. And we're hoping that you'll be back in Vancouver one of these days, and sure. um, to visit with you and and maybe to maybe to cook for us or something. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much once more, and uh, thank you again also to everybody else who's here. And um, magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 At dito na naman nagtatapos ang aming balita para sa linggong ito. Kung kayo may mga komento, mga issue o balitang nice niyong ibahagi sa aming programa, ang PNC ay bukas para sa inyong lahat. Mag-email lamang po sa balitangvancouver at gmail.com o tumawag sa 604-588-6397. Ako po si Rosette Correa at ito ang Philippine News Canada, Balitang Vancouver. For Filipino and other products from Asia, as well as fresh fruits and vegetables, poultry, meats, and seafood, come and visit 88 Supermarket with branches at 4801 Victoria Drive and its new location at 2611 East 49th Avenue in Vancouver. For your palm and face reading, horoscope, numerology, and Vasta Shasta, see astrologer Raj Guru, located at 48th Avenue East, Fraser Street, Vancouver, or call 604-750-0126.